Picking up where we left off in the last video, I want to go ahead and continue our look at the brush creator by focusing on the shape and the grain images that you can see here. Now, it's important that you understand that both of these images are going to effectively be grayscale masks. And the idea of that is that black is going to prevent any paint from being applied, and where the mask is white, it's going to apply paint. These two masks are going to work together in order to create the mark that we have. Now you can see that currently I'm getting a mark that looks like this from the dabs that make up this stroke. And you can see that they're not fully opaque. And the reason why is because the grain here is a color value of middle gray. So if I come over here and I click this first icon underneath the grain, and I choose right here the grain plane 255, which is going to be pure white, and I choose open, what you're going to see is that I'm going to get a very different mark. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mark, and you can see the mark is much more opaque. And the reason why is because this area is white and this area is white, which means that the full amount of paint is going to be in the area where these two images overlap as white. If I were to come over here and choose a different type of image, maybe this grain plane of 80, and then I were to come over here and make a mark, you'll see that I get back to that more transparent look for the dab. The reason why is because where these two images overlap, we're only getting partial opacity because this is a darker shade than pure white. We can also come over here and choose something that has a texture to it like this splat. So if I go ahead and open that, what you're going to see is that the area where this is white and the area that overlaps this where it's white is going to reveal that texture. So if I come over here and I make a mark, you can see that's exactly what I get. Now we have the ability underneath these images here to flip horizontal, flip vertical, or invert. So if I choose invert, we're going to see a very different result. And we can actually see that in a preview here, which is going to be that now the area is going to be painting where it's white here and it's white here and they're overlapping one another. So we have the ability here to get quite a lot of different marks just combining these two images together. But it's important to remember that the shape comes first and then the grain is going to modify the shape as an additional mask on top of the shape. So if I come over here and I choose a different shape, I'm gonna come down here to the lower area here and I'm gonna choose the shape of star. What you're going to see is that we're gonna get a combination of this star shape and this grain as a mask of that star shape in order to create these black stars. And of course, if I choose a different color, you'll see that we'll get whatever color we have because again, what we're doing here is we're masking the paint if I come over here and I invert this again, you'll see that we get that mark instead. So again, very important to understand that where white is, is where the paint is going to be applied. And if we have pure white here and we have pure white here, we'll get 100% paint applied. However, if we have white here and then we have black or gray here, this image will mask this image in order to create the composite effect between the two images. We can load any number of shapes and any number of grains and we can flip them horizontal, vertical, or invert them until we get exactly the combination that we want. Now, for the starting this particular tutorial series, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna choose one that is going to be called shape round, which I consider to be a basic shape. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna come back over here to the grain plane of 255. And I'm gonna choose that so that we're gonna be getting nice, big, more opaque circles. I'm gonna come back over here to black. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this layer. And you can see that I am currently set to change. And the reason why, is because this shape and this grain were not what were saved as part of this brush. So if I come over here and I choose to save as a new brush preset, which is the same thing as clicking this duplicate icon here, what you're going to see is that I get a new one. If I come back over here to Spray 5 and I choose to reset that brush back to its default, so you can see we go back to the shape and the grain. The reason why is because both of these images are going to be embedded as the defaults for that brush. And so if we want new embedded defaults for that brush that we always get back to it if we reset, we wanna make sure that we save out a new brush. Now, if we have a brush that we don't wanna keep anymore, simply click on it and click this minus icon here and that will remove it, say yes. And then what I wanna do is I also wanna come over here and I just wanna go ahead and change the name of this one to basic. I'm gonna hit enter to accept that value. You can see the name updates here and you can see the name is there. So we're gonna use this brush as our starting point for the rest of this tutorial series.